So uh, I've got Inferno Armor there. I've got a Ryo, or a, uh, I forgot what I actually called him on, on the other thing. But um, I've got swords that have no way to display. Unlike the, the uh, Wildfire Armor that puts the swords on his back, his swords just sort of either appear. What's going on, guys? So I have a problem. Um, I kind of have a set of armor here that is, in a way, incomplete. I'll show you. I need a way to store my swords and display them. Hmm. Chopper. Oh. Ah. There's almost some useful stuff in here. Remember that, just in case. I guess. So it's been a little bit since I've uh, built anything from scratch, but essentially what I'm going to be building is a sword holder or a sword base or a sword rack. Oh, okay. I'm missing a foot off of this. That's why it's sitting all wobbly. I was wondering. So uh, basically, I mean, I'm just going to use the chopper to get some smaller bits of this. I do have my, <clears throat> excuse me. I do have my calipers here, which I'm pretty sure aren't going to caliperize. No, the actual measurements aren't going to be there. Uh, this one's always been a little wonky with how the, the battery felt like functioning, but it doesn't matter. It still functions, and uh, basically I don't need accurate measurements. Like, I don't need... <clears throat> like, I don't need literal measurements. I just need the actual size uh, due to this. Like, for instance, like, I want that to be high enough. So, like, it's not just sitting near the ground by his feet, but closer to, like, round about the knees. So, I need to know roughly the height that I want for that, and then I can mark it down. And, uh, what I'm going to be doing is using styrene sheet, just in the raw, like this. Not, not plug plate, but just styrene sheet. And I'm going to laminate it a little bit, um, so that I can get a little bit of thickness out of it because you can see there the seat that he sits on is roughly kind of the thickness I want to go for. Um, I don't need it to be super thick but I do need it to be uh, at least you know able to hold its own shape and of course the way we're going to do that is we're going to laminate it using good old ultra thin cement to basically melt some pieces together. I got some clamps here like you do the only other thing I need to make sure I have is the rough uh, rough dimensions of the sheath here so that I can uh, do that. I do have the super glue out here because one of these actually kind of uh, came apart on me. So the blade is meant to come out so you can swap it out for this, but instead the handle came off. So I got to just add a tiny bit of super glue to keep the sword handle uh, on there. Um, and like I said, this is mostly, like, uh, I do need the base to be, like, squarish, so I'll probably use it for that. 
um, and I have nippers and I have all my Dremel accessories for shaping later I do have tape here right there so I can tape the two pieces together so I can get mirrored mirrored stuff which is always a good thing you want to you know you want your stuff to stay together especially when shaping um, I don't have double-sided tape so I'm just gonna double up the tape and you know get it as good as I can um, in worst case scenario I just glue the edges together so it should work out um, I'll document as best I can but the hard part's gonna be filming filming while doing this also now that I know that foot is missing I need to stick something up under there uh, yeah if only I had some type of materials it's probably in the it's probably in the toolbox itself so uh, but yeah, basically just building a quick sword holder for that, and I can even, in theory, can get this shaped up and good to go by the end of the day. Um, we'll see. Okay, so having the armor kind of set up here, basically wanting the swords to be roughly this height, I think, would look good. Uh, and I think curving upward would also be the thing to do. And you got to have just enough space to make sure they're not running into each other. So I think round about there, you know, knee height is pretty much as tall as it needs to be. So we just bust out the calipers and well, you we have a depth indicator here. So which is basically what we want. You know, we want it roughly. Let's just go straight up to the knee. So right there. We'll lock that in. And that is pretty much, I think, on the dot, 60. We can make it 60 just for the heck of it. Nearest makes no difference. You know, basically right there. <clears throat> I believe that's millimeters. Could be wrong. I guess I'm... Yeah, that's millimeters. 60 mil. Okay. So, uh, where we go from here... Now, that's our height. <clears throat> so, we've got a couple of different options the way we can do this. Let me turn my camera. So, I have a... I don't think I have a factory edge on either side of this. I think both sides of the sheet are a little rough. I think this, because it's not going to be straight either, so I guess it doesn't matter too much. But that will give me... Sorry, I'm having to work with a very limited space here. Assuming this is a straight edge here, I can actually score this. Trying not to cut the table there. So we can sort of see. Well, maybe not. Yeah, there we go. Get the reflection there. So it gives me more or less my line. So that whole thing will basically be our height. Um, and I can... It, it, it would be useful if I had a harder surface to work on, such as, maybe, I don't know, my cutting mat, which is probably what I should have brought in here. So I'll go get that. Much better. So let's see if I can't make that work out a little bit better here. Make sure nobody's in the way. Okay. Kind of trailed off there at the end, but. It does that sometimes. All right, so the other thing is, bust out the old school Tamiya kind of scoring tool, plastic scriber. And I, what did I, I had my ruler in my hand. I set it down. Okay. So, assuming that's correct over there. Let's flip it over. this again 
This time with a little more gusto. A little bit of a wiggle there, but okay. That's a much straighter line. But what it does is it creates a ridge for the ruler, meaning I can just come in here with the scribe tool. And bingo. So now I've got roughly, you know, a straight-ish edge, <laughs> roughly. You know, the the ba the backside here is not super clean, but I guess it is what it is. So let's see. Assuming that our measurements haven't changed, where does it go wrong? It's a little thick at the edge there, but it's okay. So realistically, what we're going to end up doing, I have a design in mind. I just need to kind of draw it out. And I also need, well, since this edge isn't straight and this edge is, we'll start from this side. Okay, so we're good on our height. Uh, I need our length for the feet like how wide the base of it's gonna be we'll say because it doesn't want to be wider than the sword itself so it needs to be roughly there-ish what is that 55 we're going to 50 is it too short no, 50 will work. Okay. So I'm bringing the 50 millimeters. More or less. So even if I don't use this whole thing, obviously for a thing, but I've got my thickness here, and I could also just set that up to cut this into different lengths. So we can make a straight cut. Let me think about this for a second. Because <clears throat> that's just for the base, so that's not that crazy. Actually, the base is going to be a little wider than that, so actually if I do go 55, the actual base will be wider. The things themselves will be 50. I'll make it that way. Either way, I think uh, let's just break this down into usable boards as it were so let's just make a couple of cuts here get that as straight as it can I don't think either edge is super straight <clears throat> Okay. I just get the flared out edges because that doesn't really go very well. So I'll do another one. And what I'll do is I'll break that in half basically. Okay. 
Okay. So we'll do that. Let's take some sandpaper here. Basically kind of rough up the surface. So it'll glue itself a lot easier. Fifty on the base, but that's okay. We'll just go this way. Because one thing I can definitely do is always remove, always remove. Adding back is the hard part. Okay, so I've got thirty, thirty-two. Okay, so we'll go down to sixteen. Right there. And following that previous straight edge to the best of our ability. Score it a bit. Bring back in our ruler. Same thing over here. Which one is the broken edge? It's nice and straight. Actually, this one doesn't matter. It's the same on both. Okay, so sanded sides there. We'll do the same thing over here. bust out the gluey glue I can't even see it and kind of squeeze them together basically And this is sort of where we hope for the best, honestly. <clears throat> Basically we're treating this like woodworking. Like if we're taking two planks and we need it to be thicker, so we soak both sides in wood glue. I say both sides on this one. And we do our best to cement them together like so and I've got little clampy clamps and I've got a straight edge well mostly a straight edge
I was going to say, actually, I think those are more rigid, ironically. So we'll clamp these together, leave them for about 10 minutes, and we'll come back to it. So there's that. <laughs> 